Good afternoon, Saints. Good afternoon. Welcome to Faith School, Faith Class. We study faith on Saturdays. And we want to kind of, we want to pick up on something that we uh, didn't get to last week. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful that you give us an opportunity to come over here and study your word. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done for us, how you have kept us and watched over us, kept us healthy, kept us working, kept us prosperous, um, plus given us a sound mind. Amen. We thank you for that. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will forgive us of our transgressions as we forgive those who have transgressed against us. We pray, Father, that you will open our hearts and our minds, our ears and our understanding so we can hear what you're saying here today. I pray, Father, that you will give me all utterance yes. by your Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance what I'm supposed to say here today. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Uh, Romans, the third chapter. Amen. Is everybody all right today? Amen. Praise God. Good. Good. Hallelujah. Romans, the third chapter, the third verse, says, What then... If some did not believe or were unfaithful to God, their lack of unbelief will not nullify or make invalid the faithfulness of God and his word, will it? Certainly not. Will somebody's faith make God's faithfulness of none effect? No, it won't. It says, um, for first, certainly not. It will not do nothing. You know, we come over here four days a week. I thank the Lord for it. You know, it gives us strength. It's, it's no uh, heartache or nothing hard for us to do. I mean, it gives us strength. Make sure that after we're done teaching, we he feeds us good. Right. We, get <clears> we get a rest. good night's rest. I mean, yeah. sweet sleep. And, um, you know, we praise him for that. And he's saying here, if some do not believe, the King James puts it this way, for what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Well, we know when we present these videos and we go through these scriptures that some are going to believe. And some are not going to believe. But if Jesus teached and preached to people and all that he said and done and some did not believe, right. That's right. we yes. shouldn't get upset or fall off our chair if somebody don't believe us. Because they didn't, you know, a lot of them didn't believe him. And same That's with Paul's idea. ministry. You know, he had... He, preached the gospel and went on missionary journeys and um, people paid their way to persecute him. <laughs> and, and, you know, one time they stoned him down there in Leicester, didn't they? Right. So, you know, those who live godly will suffer persecution. But Jesus told his disciples something important. If somebody don't want to hear what you're saying, you know, shake the dust off your feet and go on to the going. next, keep right. going. And also, he was saying in another one of his scriptures that um, everybody is not going to believe. They're just not going to believe. Not. Well, you know, a few years back, people used to teach on faith. And, you know, uh, they would pray the prayer of agreement. You know, where two or three are assembled together, he's in the midst, and you can ask for what you want, and it should be done unto you. And um, a lot of people have stopped praying, stopped believing in faith, because what they did, 
they prayed for something and nothing happened. You know, I've heard testimonies of people say, you know, I prayed that God would heal my mother. And she passed away. And they, they really get mad with God. Yeah, they do. And that's, when you pray for something and it don't happen, and you blame God for it, that's a mistake. Or if you're believing for something and something don't happen and you blame God for it, that's a big mistake. A lot of people have done that and what they have came up with, it's all up to God or some form of that. <laughs> you know, if it happens, it's God's will. If it don't happen, it's not his will. That's why they put on the end of their prayer, not my will, but thy will be done. And that's not right. That's not true. Because Jesus said, told us, it's according to your faith, right? According to your faith, and if you ask in my name, you shall be given. It's according to your faith. Yeah, you know, a lot of people, this is why we teach faith class, because uh, the ones that do listen and, you know, the ones that do come over here and all of that, their faith is increasing. Faith is progressive. Right. Uh, Romans says, from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith, right? right. So That's faith right. is progressive. Mm -hmm. You believe something God has said, mm -hmm. and what happens, he gives you more life. And faith is not understanding everything that God says. You it's believing it. Right, you don't have to understand. Right, that's what faith is, believing what he said, even if you don't understand it. And where you start, you start believing on what you know, right? Right. You believe that, well, hey, God has saved me, and God has kept me healed, and, and you know, all of that. But and Sister John Carter, has, in uh, John, the seventh chapter, the 64th verse, uh, fourth verse he's talking about that he said but still there are some of you who do not believe and have faith but Jesus knew from the beginning who did not believe and who would betray him and he was saying this is the reason why I told you that no one can come to me and unless it has been granted him that is unless he is enabled to do so by the father and so uh John the seventh uh, chapter, and it says that. Uh, what verse was that? Uh, sixty-four and sixty-five. Sixty-four and sixty-five. Because if they don't believe in God, they're not going to be able to come to Jesus. Well, here's another Unless text that an we were looking at uh, in this uh, this series that we're teaching on is authentic faith, genuine, sincere, real, true. Authentic faith. Right. And he says it again in that uh, sixth chapter. And uh, first, second Timothy, mm -hmm. we uh, use this text too. Second Timothy, the first chapter, starting at verse five. Um, I'm going to read out King James. The verse 5, are we there? Amen. It said, um, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother Lois, and in thy mother Eunice, Eunice. Eunice. Eunice, and I am persuaded that it is in thee also. He said, Unfeigned Unfeigned faith. Unfeigned, we talked about that in our previous classes. Unfeigned faith is real faith. Amen? Amen? That's what the word, you know, in the language that we use today, <laughs> you know, we don't use the word unfeigned. I think the King, uh, the Amplified says sincere. Listen. It says surrender, and it still has to do with okay. God. You had to surrender your entire self to God. Well, read that verse out, Amplified. It says, uh, 
nor to pay attention to legends, fables, and myths. And in the uh, genealogies. That's uh, First give, Timothy, Second Timothy, one five. Oh, sorry. This was explaining it to him in the wrong. Yeah, uh, both First Timothy, the first chapter, and Second Timothy, the first chapter, mm -hmm. uses that word unfeigned. Okay, well, it was faith. For some reason, saying the same thing. It says. I remember your sincere and unqualified faith. See, it's saying the same thing. Amen. Surrendering and unqualified, wait a minute, surrendering of your entire self to God in Christ, which the other verse said too. Mm -hmm. With confident trust in his power and wisdom and goodness of faith, which first lived in the heart of your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I am confident that it is in you as well. Okay, the word unfeigned in the King James, and uh, she read it in the Amplified, means sincere, All right, sincere, genuine, real, true faith. So if there is an unfeigned, there is a feigned faith. Mm -hmm. A feigned faith is a false faith, right. a counterfeit faith. It, uh, matter of fact, fame means to give a false appearance, right. pretend, speak and act as to make it appear that something is the case when in fact it is not. Huh. What? And I understand what you're saying, but I'm getting a revelation here. Go ahead, sister. The only way you're going to get uh, to believe even in Christ, you got to love God. you got to... Uh, Trust God, you know, surrender yourself to him, and then he gives you that. You get it. Amen. <laughs> and you get drawn to Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus said, if you don't uh, acknowledge me, you're not acknowledging God. Amen. And when you see me, you see God. But see, they don't see God either. They, they don't even love God. They're not devoted to God. They wasn't devoted to him in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't want to put their trust and faith in God. They want a new king. Amen. So, so they, that's what why. this uh, we looked at here, and we, we looked faith at pretend God. faith. Right. That's somebody who's pretending they pretend. that they have faith when they don't. We looked right. at the book of Acts. When the uh, seven sons of Siva oh, went down there and tried to cast out a devil and got beat all up right, and hospitalized naked. and <laughs> naked and all of that, they were <laughs> they were pretending like they had faith, like right. Paul. Paul, they had seen Paul preach and cast out devils and heal people and all that, and they were pretending like they had that same faith, right. but they it wasn't real faith. It wasn't authentic faith. And then we looked at uh, arrogant faith, which is egotistical faith, mm -hmm. presumptuous faith. Mm -hmm. That was people that said that they had faith in God, and God told them to do something different. Mm -hmm. And when he told them to do what he told them to do, they wouldn't do it. Right. And then they turned around, and God said, okay, well, if you don't want to do that, just go back into the wilderness. This was the first coming people. Mm -hmm. Told them to go into the land and of Cana and, you know, take it. And they said, no, we ain't going in there. He right. said, okay, go back into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And then they turned around and said, oh, I have sinned. You heard people say that before? When God has told them to do something, they said, oh, Lord, I have sinned. I will go ahead and do what you told me to do. But he, he's telling you before you even... Pray to him, don't do not do what I told you to do the first time. Yeah, do you, something else. You, re regret, you reject So it you are arrogant, egotistical. We had uh, several names that we used for that. And they <laughs> and they not surrendering their entire self to God. Amen. They haven't surrendered their entire self to they God. Right. They have presumptuous faith. Right. And then we looked at unsupported faith. That means that you have faith to do something, but you haven't heard from God. It's unsupported by the Word of God. 
you know, people can have faith in themselves. They can have faith, oh, I'm gonna, I got faith that I can go to yeah. college, get this degree, and then when I'm out of school, get this job. But that faith is not based on faith in God. No, it's not. It's always on the back of my head. It's unsupported by faith in God. No it's, it's not supported by God's faith. God may have told me to do something else. And they said, well, I'm going to do this. And they, yeah, I'm telling you. Egotistical. No, it it's not. It's not an authentic faith. The authentic faith is Matt, uh, Mark eleven twenty two says, "Have faith in God." Right. It says, "Have faith in God." Right. Right. And you and you write about that. They have unsupported faith in something they want to do. If they're not going to succeed, but their support is, they have complete confidence in God, and it's based on faith in God. It's nothing they can do that's going to fail. And, you know, when we taught on that unsupported faith, <laughs> it led into dead faith. That's what it be. It's dead as a It's dead. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do they this. But there's that. no action no. behind it. A lot of mouth. It's just dead faith. Because they're not doing that. And that led us to the James, the second chapter. Amen. Amen. The 14th and through 17th verse. The 14th. Oh, uh, James, the second chapter. Okay. James talks about this. And we saw that in James, the. <clears throat> The 14th verse, second chapter 14th verse, he said, What do it profit, my brother, though a man say he has faith and has not works? That's right. Can faith save him? Now, works there is doing. Right. It's not the works of the law. That's right. It's the doing part of it. Right. Or some people call it corresponding actions. Mm -hmm. And then it says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace and be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, mm -hmm. what do it profit? Right. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being a law. And it's dead. Read that last verse, that 17th verse. It says, so too, faith, if it does not have works to back it up, is by itself dead and operative and ineffective. So that's another type of false faith, fake faith. Pretend faith, arrogant faith, or presumptuous, unsupported, and dead faith. See, if you know all this, you will find out why your faith hasn't been working. And, and I like the way you had us read that 14 um, verse because it says genuine faith produces good works. It does. Genuine faith. Genuine faith. It's not a mere claim of faith. It's, it's not sufficient, it says. So read that out Amplified 14 through 17. It says, what is the benefit, my fellow believers, if someone claims to you to have faith but has no good works as evidence. Can that kind of faith save him? No. A Who'd mere you pick up claim, the genuine faith from? It has it under, under here. 14? Under, yes. Oh, okay. It says, no, a mere claim of faith is not sufficient. Genuine faith produces good works. Amen. If a brother or a sister is without adequate clothing and lacks enough food for each day and one of you says to them go in peace with my blessing and keep warm and feed yourselves but he does not give them the necessities for the body mm. what good does that do so too faith if it does not have works to back it up is by itself dead and operative and ineffective there you go so, if you don't have something to bag up your faith, 
If you're right. pretending you have faith or you you know you have presumptions or unsupported faith or dead faith, right. your faith won't work. You you know a lot of people know how to quote a lot of scriptures and they got uh, mm -hmm. all the notes and all the books all and the all books, the yeah. the CDs on faith mm -hmm. and they've been studying this for years and years and mentally they think they have faith. But they're not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when something uh, happened to them and they be using these little formulas they have in their head and it don't work. Amen. So <laughs> where that <laughs> led us to was Mark the seventh chapter. Um, this is Jesus talking here in Mark the seventh chapter. He also talks about it in Luke. Um, not Mark, but Matthew. Matthew. The seventh chapter. Thank you, Lord. He's good. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his word is true. Amen. And how about if some do not believe? Would that make the faith of God of none effect? No. No. This is all about, faith is about believing. And now here's what Jesus said in Matthew, the seventh chapter. Woo, thank you, Lord. Let me get here. The devil got these little, well, I ain't going to give the devil no credit. Don't give it. It says, in the 21st verse, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, Amen. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken them unto a wise man which builds his house upon a rock. Mm -hmm. Now we know the rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. But what he's talking about here, he said here, therefore, therefore whosoever hears these sayings of mine, his words, right? And do them. Right, you have to do something. And he said, The rains descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Right. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be like a foolish man which builds his house upon sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. See, this is what we're talking about. If you got a fitting faith, real, true, genuine faith, sincere faith, right? When the winds of life come, the storms of life are going to come in everybody's life. Mm -hmm. You'll be still standing after the storm is gone. But if you're building, if you're not doing what he say do, you're building your house on sand. And when the storms come, you, you're going to fall. And we see this all the time. You're going to fall because you didn't surrender yourself to God. And if you have, then you listen and you obey whatever he tells you. Well, here's what, and here's you what Matthew's, uh, you I mean, Luke says, and you won't. in Luke the sixth chapter, here's what he says. Because a lot of people say, well, I'm doing what he said do. What they Jesus said in Matthew, uh, he never knew you. Right, that's going to say don't do it. Because you're not doing it, you're just saying it. He has in that 23rd verse. Uh, Hold on, let me get to the verse I want to okay. get to here. All right. Um, Luke, the sixth chapter, it's, I want to get to the 46th verse. Okay. Luke, the sixth chapter. The sixth chapter. 
This whole chapter is about the Beatitudes, the sixth chapter of Luke. Amen? Amen. And he says in this 46th verse, And why call you, why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Amen. He makes it plain here. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Right. Amen. That's why they fall. That's 46. Just 646. Read, just read different and amplified. We'll read it right. out amplified then. It says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? So that's doing, the practice. And last week we came up, well, a lot of people say, well, I, I'm doing what the Lord said do. That is a big statement mm -hmm. for anybody to say, even right. myself. Right, that you be practicing, oh, trying to get it, trying to get it there. You know, you this can. is why we're over here in faith class, and we right. be in healing class, and love class, and, and everything. Honest. You know, we stay in his word, mm -hmm. because we got to hear what he's saying. And Jesus said, those that have an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And, and he just made a big statement. If you're doing everything he say that you do, then we should be walking on water and doing everything. We should be acting just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. If we're yeah. doing everything we that he said do. Head. That's right. Well, here's one big thing that we came up with uh, last week, and we stopped there, and I asked the viewers, you know, give me a time to present the case on this, to make right. it plain. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, we, we had, uh, we went to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Hmm. Are we going there now? Yes, we are. This is how it came about. Because a lot of people say, Lord, Lord, I'm doing everything. They said that in the seventh chapter. Right. Lord, I'm doing, doing you know, everything. and he's talking about, no, I never knew you, you right. workers of iniquity. Mm -hmm. Doing everything they wanted to do. Right, but here in the fifth chapter of Matthew, this is a big subject here. If you are doing what he say do, are you walking in love? Right. Are you walking in love? He said that we're supposed to walk in love. Right. He also said that we're not supposed to worry. He also said that we're supposed to assemble ourselves together. Right. Are you going to church then? Now let me read this verse out of Galatians. Hold your place here in um, Matthew, the fifth chapter. You don't have to go to Galatians. But Galatians, the fifth chapter, the sixth verse says, for in, this... Okay, I guess they want to go there. Y'all want to put your eyes on it, huh? Hey, Amen. Didn't you tell us to do Praise this? Praise God. They fall in directions. Here's what uh, it says um, in Galatians, the fifth chapter, the sixth verse. Mm -hmm. Galatians. We right there, six, Amen. Five, six. Give her a chance. Hey, Amen. We want to. You there? Yeah. Okay, it says, for if we are in Christ, Jesus. That's a big statement. Right. For if we are. we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, that means either the Jews or the Gentiles, mean anything. Right, that's true. It don't mean nothing. But only faith activated and expressed and working through love. Mm -hmm. So, you supposed to so you're it. supposed to be walking in love or your faith is not working. You got dead faith. Right. Because you're not doing what he said do. Right. Right? Okay, here, here we go. I think you're ready. I think, I think you're ready for this. I, like, yeah. I'm presenting this case and, and the Lord, you know, has given it to me, you know. Um, he says in the fifth chapter of Matthew. Oh, right. Verse 43. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should go to the Amplified with this. Probably should. He said, in the Amplified, 
You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor, fellow man, and hate your enemy. That's what, that's what the Old Testament says, right? Yes. You're supposed to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Okay, who is your enemy? Your enemy is a person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. That's an enemy. Right? But here's what he says in the 43rd verse. I mean, in the 44th verse, he says, um, well, let's look at a couple of verses here, because it's got some reference verses here. Uh, 1918, Leviticus 19.18. Can somebody turn there and read that? And then somebody turn to Psalms 139, verse 21 and 22. I knew Leviticus. Uh, 139, verses 21 and 22. You want me to read Leviticus? Yeah, you can read Leviticus uh, 18, uh, 1918. Let him do where he's going. Okay, I'll read it now. 1918. Mm -hmm. It says, you shall not take Revenge nor bear a grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor, acquaintance, associate, companion as yourself. I am the Lord. So that was a commandment. Um, okay, now in Psalm 39, I thought it was very and interesting. Then, and then Psalm 139, excuse me, Psalm 139. You know, takes you back to well, Hold on, five. hold on here. Okay. Let me, can I give this the way the Lord gave it to me? Okay. Zip. <laughs> Zip. This is I the Lord's excited, word. You know, you I, I am excited. <laughs> I am really excited. Um, read verses 21, 22, Psalm 139, verses 21 and 22, and then read 23 and 24. You got that? Yeah. All right, read it nice and loud. It says, do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect and utmost hatred. They have become my enemies. Search me. Thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Test me, and know my anxious thoughts, and see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me, and lead me in the everlasting way. That was now, David. That was a Psalm of read? David. Which one did he read? He read verses twenty-one to twenty-four. Okay, now getting back here to Matthew, the fifth chapter, it says in that forty-third verse. That's what he was talking about. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor, fellow man, and hate your enemy. But here in the 44th verse, but I say unto you, is this Jesus talking? Yes. All right. This is our Lord, right? right. And we, we call him Lord. Right. Lord, Lord. Right. right. He said, don't call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say, right? Right. Okay, here's what he says. But I say to you, love, that is, unselfishly seek the best and higher good for your enemy. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. And pray for those who persecute you. Right. Now, the King James, it says, that 44th verse, it says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And I said, Lord, you, you got me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because right there on the wall is black, la black life matters. And it says an enemy is a person who is actively opposing and hostile to someone or something. We have we got enemies out here. Yeah, we do. 
we we know we got enemies because I mean an enemy oppresses people. Right. That's what the devil does. That's what he does. He oppresses people. And when you know if we if we if we're gonna call him Lord Lord right, right. we gotta walk in love. Because our faith is activated by love. That's right. That's the only way it is. So if he say you're supposed to love your enemies, we got to love them. Right. Well, let me give you a little help on that. Go to Proverbs 25. Mm -hmm. I'm already there. Already there. Proverbs 25, read verse 21 and 22. Okay, I just read it. I'll read it out loud. Yes, go ahead. Uh, you'll give them a chance to get it. there. Yeah, I am. Y'all there already? Okay, Proverbs 25, verses 21 and 22. It reads, If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. And then 22 reads, for in doing so, you will heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord will reward you. You mean the Lord going to reward you for doing good to your enemies? Yes, he does. Woo, that's what he says. And he does it. Now, this all is reference to the 12th chapter of Romans. We're talking about loving our enemy. Right. Now, a lot of people, I, I, I understand what they're going through and what has happened to, you know, different their family members and how their uh, ancestors were oppressed and how they were uh, persecuted and put to death and all of that. This is nothing new. This happened to God's first covenant people in Egypt. And they were in Egypt 400 and some years. We've been under oppression for right. 400 and some years. Yes, we have the same. Money. There's kind of a, a parallel there. Right, the word Egypt, does that mean body? Egypt is the world. Mm -hmm. Can y'all excuse me for a minute? I gotta use that. Oh, okay. Uh, meditate on that for a minute. I know that's a, that's a whole mouthful, a handful of whatever. You know, right? Right. You know, when somebody say, love your enemy. Yeah. And you even say, turn the other cheek when you and get struck. Lord, do I really have to do that? Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. God is, God is good to us. He has all these, he says, without love, we just, uh, uh, a tingling symbol. We can read that while we're waiting on him. While we're waiting on the pastor to return, so we won't, um, if you turn to 1 Corinthians, uh, the 13th chapter, we just read something about this love until he uh, returns. I'm going to start at the second verse. It says, and if I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand all the mysteries and possess all the knowledge, and if I have all sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but do not have love reaching out to others, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to feed the poor and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it does me no good at all. I'm just telling them about love when you get, came well, back so we wouldn't get out of the I don't out of what you said. To y'all. I know. I'm, I'm just I'm presenting that was an intermission a, a commercial. You know, Sister Carter's <laughs> on it. I mean, you can tell that we're married because she already knows some of the stuff I'm already gonna say. <laughs> Go to Romans 12th chapter. Let me let me get this thing moving before she she preached the whole teach the whole message. Woo! Bless her Lord. We're gonna take it to you another way though, because God said we're supposed to love our enemies, and we are if we give them 
bread when they're hungry and give them water when they're right. thirsty. We're going to get rewarded for that. That's right, we are. But Paul, in the 12th chapter, really opens your eyes about loving your enemies. Because a lot of people have a problem with this, and by them having a problem with this, they can't get the blessing. That's right. They, they just miss out. They don't have no power or nothing. They can't get the Unless blessing. They try to do it on their own, actually. Here's, here's what God says. Why he says, love your enemy. And this goes back to it's according to your faith in God. Not going to it's all up to God. No, it's according to your faith in God. He wants you to do something. You got to do something. You got to love your enemies. Amen. Because if you're not loving your enemies, you don't love him. You don't love him. Now, in Romans 12, the 14th through the 21st verse, Ooh, it really talks a lot about this. Hmm. But we're just going to go to 14 to 21. I'm going to read it out. Of, I'm going to read out of King James. I'm going to read out of Amplify. It says, Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Oh, Lord. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. We do do that. We do have rejoice with people that rejoice. And when something awful happens, we weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in thy own conceits. Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. If you do your part, God will take, do his part. Yeah, he will. They ain't getting away with it. And then it says, um, Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. In so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Well, this is how you see that they quote a lot of things from the Old Testament and the New Testament. God don't change. He's unchangeable. Give us that out Amplified okay. verses 14. Because Amplified really brings it out a lot better. Because the King James, a lot of words they use, you know, just like the one unfeigned. We don't use that today. No, we don't use that. I've never used that. What it means is authentic, genuine, sincere, real, true faith. Give us 14 through 21 out of that. It says, uh, bless those who persecute you, who cause you harm or hardship. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, sharing in others' joy and weep with those who weep, sharing others' grief. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, conceited, self-important, exclusive, but associate with humble people, those with realistic self-view. Mm -hmm. Do not overestimate yourself. My, my, my. Never repay anyone evil for evil. Take thought of what is right and the gracious and proper in the sight of everyone. Mm -hmm. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath. 
and his judicial righteousness. For it is written in the scripture, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if you, if your enemy hunger, is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome and conquered by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. So this is something God told us to do. And I know a lot of people got a problem with this. And this is why so many of our people are perishing. Because they will not listen to God. Right. They will not walk in love. Mm -hmm. They will not assemble themselves together. That's, that's what God said. And if you can't assemble yourself together with the saints and get some understanding and get the truth about something. See, if you were assembling yourself together with the saints, you wouldn't be out there getting yourself in trouble. You would know that you, look, I got to get some education here. I got to stop drinking. I got to stop, you know, with that, them drugs and stuff. Right. I, I, you know, you start, you know, I'm not saying you're going to get over it right away. A lot of people do. I mean, they stop drinking just like that mm -hmm. and stop drugs just like that. But some people, it takes a little longer because their faith has to increase. Right? right. That's right. Now, Proverbs 10. We're running out of time here. But if we can get this in our in our spirit. Amen. Get it in our soul and spirit. Because see, we're supposed to be renewing our mind. That's right. Right? That's right. All the time. You know, this is what's wrong with us as a people. There is another verse. I'm going to give you this verse, but go to Proverbs. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you uh, 1 Corinthians 10 chapter here. But you, you're right, because when we don't do what he tells us, do we be self-destructive? Right. It own. says uh, in 1 Corinthians 10, 32, it says, Give none effect, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. That's three group of people that are in the world. You say first of all. You're in one of those groups or the other. You're either a Jew or a Gentile or you are in the church. But he's talking to the church. That was uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 32. Oh, okay. Now here in Proverbs, the 10th chapter, the 12th verse, it says... Proverbs, the 10th chapter, the 12th verse. Ooh, this is strong here. I give it to you out of the King James, and one of y'all can read it out Amplified. It says, hate dirt stirs up strife. If you're out there protesting in hate, saying, you know, this is my enemy. You know, it says it stirs up strife, but love overcomes all sin. Okay. Read that out after five. It says hatred stirs up strife, but love covers and overwhelms all transgressions, forgiving and overlooking another's fault. So you can't be walking out there. No, you? you can't. It's going to stir up strife. Just because somebody is hating you. God says you're supposed to love your enemy. Amen. Let me give you another verse on this. Uh, 1 John, the second chapter. You know, God, see, you, have, you when God says something, you can find it in by two, the voice of two or three different witnesses. That's right. Tell us. Tell us. And we have looked at love your enemies from two or three different witnesses. Right. Okay, 1 John, the second chapter, verse 9. Ooh, this is strong. It says, uh, praise God. He that saith 
he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. Right. <laughs> what does it say how to amplify it? Now, he's talking to the church. No love. Because on Sunday morning, that is one of the biggest racial moments in the week. Because you have this people over here believe in one thing. They talk about they love God and they love their brother, but they they're not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. They see all this happening, how people are oppressing, oppressing oh us mm -hmm. and killing us mm -hmm. and doing all manner of evil against us, and they're not saying nothing. They're saying, oh, we love them, but they're not doing nothing. So Jesus said, if you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say. <laughs> okay, go with the third chapter, the 15th verse. Because, you know, a lot of people see that you got, uh, in the Bible it talks about fake love. Right, it'd be fake. Pretend love. You meet somebody, how sister, how brother. Unsupported love. And when you need something. Dead love. It, same way it talks about faith, it talks about love the same way. Amen. And um, we're just giving you some highlights on it. And 3.15, uh, 1 John 3.15 says, Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. Right. Woo. Mm -hmm. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. This is what God is saying. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He said if you if you <laughs> if you love them, you can get rid of a multitude of sins. Right. It covers a multitude of sins. What does it say how to uh, amplify that verse 15? It says everyone who hates works against his brother in Christ is at heart a murderer by God's name. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And you see in the reference, it goes back to 521. Right, 21 through 23. Was he saying the same thing? Mm -hmm. That's Jesus talking. Right. Now, in the fourth chapter of 1 John, the 20th verse, I like the way that first verse reads. Let me stop at that first verse, uh, the fourth chapter, because here's what the, one of the biggest problems is. It. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That's, right. that's, that's, that's the problem. Right, they teach them wrong. They're teaching their kids mm -hmm. hatred and right. racism. Right, they are. Right in school. Right in school. In the home. This is one reason when she was teaching Thursday on the uh, the Amalites, God said, just kill them all. Get right. rid of They're all of them because it was in their seed. Even in their animals. And God said, he will repay. Vengeance is his, he will repay. That's what he means. There, there is not. It's not strange to me that we're under this pandemic. Right. Because the mercy of God has been on us for over 400 years, over 400 or, years. you know, this country, and we haven't done any bad. As a matter of fact, we have kicked God out of schools. Mm -hmm. We have kicked God out of a, a lot of things. Out of church. They, they well, here's what it says in this fourth church. chapter, 20 and 21. Mm -hmm. It says, if a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. That sounds like Satan, don't it? Yeah. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God in whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loves God loves his brother also. 
You mean that out of King James? No, you. I mean out of Amplified. If anyone says, I love God and hates works against his Christian brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has not seen, or whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should also unselfishly love his brother and seek the best for him. Now, 1 Corinthians 10, I gave you that verse. It says, give no offense to the Jews or the Gentiles or the church of God, right? Mm -hmm. If we say, if God has told us today to love your enemy, that means that we got to love everybody in the church. It's true. Because the I mean, enemy is in the church today. Jesus said, it. haven't I told, chosen you 12 and one of y'all is the devil? Me. Yeah. We know that the enemy is in the church because this is why he told you at the beginning of this chapter, you know, uh, not to believe every spirit, but try to pierce spirits, see whether they are a God. That means test them. Right. And, and when you start doing that, you see that a lot of them are false prophets. Right. Because if we as Christians can come together, come together, right? It says, do not forsake the assembly of yourself together, but come together, we can get a lot of this straightened out. That's right. I'm talking about different races of Christians. There shouldn't be no racism in the church. But it is. But they have I mean, I, I have listened to different ministers. They you talk. They, they and, and when they talking like they, you know, they love everybody, but they're not doing nothing for other people. They were ready to go overseas to somebody that don't know them and preach the gospel rather than to preach the gospel in the hood and help them people. That's because they don't. But love they say God. we're missionary. It's a mission going on right here in the United States. And people are getting evicted from their homes. People are hungry. People don't have jobs. What you gonna do about that? You say you say that you love Come people, on. right? And Jesus said we got to love our enemies, even though a lot of our enemies out there haven't did what they were supposed to do, right? They haven't, we know everybody did what they're supposed to do. I ain't even did what I, everything I'm supposed to do. This is why the Lord shook me up, said, you know, you say, Lord, Lord. If you call me Lord, Lord, and you're not walking in love, well, I am walking in love. I, I do love my brother. He said, well, love your enemies too. Right. <laughs> right. You got to love your enemies gotta too. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to finish presenting this. There's a whole lot more coming to this. You know, but that is dead faith. When you say with your mouth, you just, you know, blabbing a whole lot of scriptures off. And you're skipping the scriptures that tell you really what to do. And a lot of people, what they do, they pick certain scriptures because they want to get a certain theme over to you. Mm -hmm. That they are good, they they were, you know, they're walking in love and they're doing all that, but they skip over all the rest of the scriptures about loving your enemy and doing good to those that hate you and persecute you. They skip over all of that. They finagle it around so you will love them and then you do what they tell you to do. That's what they're the trying. That's, that's, that's what they about. want you to if do you love is love me, them. Love church, but if you, you love God, you're gonna put, do what God said. You need do. to put this amount of money in here. You need right. to be doing that. And come in here and, and sweep God. the floor and clean out the toilet and, and you know do, do whatever we tell you. To, you know. It's right. It's he called impression. Yeah, we're out of time. We will pick this up. She, she wants you to pray for everybody. Well, wait. I know it. Well, we prayed when we started. See, here's what I'm learning about prayer. The more pacific you are, 
friend of God, the more he he can zero in on it. So here's what we're gonna pray. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for coming over here and helping us through this word. We thank you for you being in us and we in you. We thank you for opening our eyes. Our prayer here today, Lord, is that you will use us to love our enemies and to do good to those who persecute us and that we wait for your wrath and revenge to be brought on them. Let us be an example to this world that we're going to walk in love no matter what anybody says. We know what's going on out there. Let us be an example for the church and for you to walk in the love that you would have us to walk in. Since you have told us to love our enemies, that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk in love. We're going to just do it. We know that everybody in these different denominations and these different churches, they, they're saying that they're, they love people, but they're not doing nothing. They have dead faith. We pray that they hear this message and that it will stir them up to do more for the body of Christ. That means any race, do more for any race. Don't just look at the outer appearance of somebody and stereotype them. Look at them as a brother and sister in Christ, we pray. That we can all be brothers and sisters in Christ and come together on one as one so that we can overcome good with evil. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Is that, is that Pacific enough? Specific, but they need to love God. So none of that's going to happen.